everybody. Let's continue with the presentation on biological risk factors for HIV transmission through, this, through sex. One of these risk factors is the viral load. When there is a high amount of virus in the blood, this increases the risk of HIV transmission. Then the receptive pattern, women are more susceptible, especially when they play sex through the perineal vaginal route. Then also the receptive pattern, these receptive patterns are more susceptible. The, recept the receptive patterns are also more susceptible in perineal anosex, meaning Sexual intercourse is being played using the anus instead of the vagina. Then age, adults and girls are more particularly susceptible. Sex during uh -huh. menstruation, women are more vulnerable and men are also at an increased risk. Why? Because in the menstrual blood, the viral load is very high. Then the uncircumcised male are more susceptible to the infection because the foreskin may harbor some of the AIDS, the, the HIV virus, especially if the man doesn't wash his foreskin very well. Then damage to the mucus or submucous membranes, the risk factors involved include damage during sexual intercourse, female genital mutilation, and also violent sex. The risk factor here is trauma of the mucous membranes. Then sexually transmitted infections. These ones also have a significantly high risk because if, for example, an individual is having a syphilitic chancre, the virus may enter through the syphilitic chancre. And also the other sexually transmitted infections that involve inflammation of the reproductive tract these ones also pose a high risk of transmission of HIV AIDS. Let's look at the manifestation and measurement of HIV AIDS. Physical manifestations include loss of weight, weakness, diarrhea, tuberculosis, and the fungal skin infections. CD4 count measures the immune system damage, and the normal count is usually 5,000, to 1,200 cells per mil, but in AIDS, it is under 20 cells per mil. Let's look at the phases of HIV AIDS infection. We have the window period, we have the seroconversion, we have the asymptomatic period, then we have the AIDS-related illness, AIDS. Summary. Without treatment, people living without treatment, people having HIV progress to AIDS. And about seven to eight years after being infected with the HIV virus. People living with AIDS can transmit the virus during all the stages that we have seen in the previous slides. HIV is not visible. Apparently, nobody can see it with the naked eye, but individuals who are having HIV do not realize that they are infected. At the same time, people with the HIV can be reinfected with different strands of HIV AIDS if they don't control their sexual behavior, and this will weaken the immune system more and more. Therefore, protecting themselves against reinfection is important through abstinence and consistent use of condoms. Thank you for listening. Let's stop there. We'll continue from next time with the symptoms and signs of HIV AIDS. Have a blessed day.